what role is sleep playing in Suze's, you know, big long-term strategy? Because you are also kind of looking, not you in general, you know, uh, as we discussed last time, OS itself is not enough. You have to bring all the other components of the stack. So uh, please talk about the role of SLEE in, in Suze's uh, product portfolio or marketing strategy. Hi, this is Bharti and welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. Today, Suza is announcing uh, the release of Suza Enterprise uh, 15 uh, Service Pack 2. And we have with us uh, our regular Dr. Thomas DiGiacomo, President of Innovation and Engineering at Suze, to discuss uh, this service pack and uh, the topics. So first of all, Thomas, once again, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Swapnil. Uh, tell us a bit about what are some of the key highlights of this service pack. Yeah, so that's that's a major release for of the latest SLES um, products, and it comes with a lot of things actually to help our customers in their IT transformation and for their business innovation. So, some of the things that it comes with is uh, live patching. You know, that's been a technology Susa has been working for a long time, and we bring live patching to mainframes. So, IBM Z series and Linux One uh, will benefit from live patching, which is quite quite cool for mission critical workloads. Another thing that it comes with is also a, a brand new set of cloud, public cloud images from having SLES 15 service pack two on AWS, Google, Azure, but also AliCloud, IBM Cloud or Oracle Clouds. Uh, it's already there as well so that people can benefit from SLES, the latest version on public clouds. And it comes with a, a long list of new hardware enablements, new certifications for some industries, and, and a lot of improvements as well around SAP, uh, which is a key workload for us. Before we get into all these uh, features, I want to understand, uh, if you look at the, the recent acquisition, which is still in progress, uh, what role is sleep playing in Suze's you know, big long-term strategy? Because you are also kind of looking, not you in general, you know, uh, as we discussed last time, OS itself is not enough. You have to bring all the other components of the stack. So. Uh, Please talk about the role of SLE in, in Suze's uh, product portfolio or marketing strategy. Yeah, and, and the role, well, it's key for Suze, obviously, but I think it's key as well for the solutions that our customers and partners need, uh, whether they're focusing on public cloud, on-prem, or edge, or, or hybrid, uh, hybrid environment. So it's actually at the core, the foundation of pretty much every stack. And uh, some people are saying that containers are Linux, but they are. So you need a, a Linux OS that is well designed for multi-cloud type of environments and as well very, very much optimized and actually um, enhancing and, and, and uh, providing the, the base components for, for containers and applications. So it's a key part of the, of, the, of the story. It's also a key part for Edge. If you look at Edge, we've made a lot of improvements to Linux for Edge use cases, and that will combine very nicely with also cloud native technologies that are very well appropriate for Edge as well, uh, with thousands and thousands of devices that you actually need to manage. And, uh, and maybe we'll talk about SUSE Manager. We also announced a new release of SUSE Manager, specifically targeting large clusters and large devices, tens of thousands of them uh, for Edge, like in the retail use cases, like with small shops, point of sales and point of services that needs to be managed as well. So. Linux is key uh, for everything, basically. You mentioned a couple of things there. Uh, Edge was mentioned there. Uh, Suze is also very strong in HPC space. Um, and also, if I'm not wrong, uh, SLE, uh, I think all Suze products, they have kind of modularized where you don't have to really. Diff so if you look at the Edge use case, um, and from the point of view of SLE 15 service pack 2, what is there for Edge use cases in this release? As you mentioned, the architecture of SLES is, is quite modular. So um, you don't have to deploy the full-fledged, um, very heavy Linux. I mean, you could almost start with the kernel only, uh, basically, and a few libraries or a few user space um, specific modules for, for your use case. And, um, and uh, depending on the size of your Edge, I mean, it depends if you're by Edge, some people, they think end devices, small devices, Raspberry Pi type of things. Uh, for some people, Edge is a data center in a way as well, a small one, but still a data center. So depending on your use case, then you can also set up and, and benefit from the less power uh, adapted to what you need. Uh, and then 
having the same code base, you can manage it the same way, you benefit from the same certification, security patches, upgrade support, and all of that, but specifically target it for, for your use case. And um, in a way, that's the same in, in public cloud, where the images are designed and optimized for public cloud. I'm thinking about Azure, for instance, where we even have an optimized kernel tuned for Azure infrastructure. You know, our goal is to provide a, a single OS that can be also tweaked and tuned to, to specific use cases from edge to cloud, uh, to small devices, different, different hardware architecture. Uh, but really doing that with the same code base, because then you benefit from all the things that it brings in terms of certification, security, and stability performances as well. Right. Uh, since we're talking about, uh, and you're right, I, Edge is not just about those tiny Edge data centers. Uh, they are the data centers at remote location. And the, one of the big challenge is that maintenance update of those, you know, Edge, you know, uh, cases where you cannot, in, like, if you look at this pandemic, you may not even be able to be able to send somebody there. So uh, that's where, you know, a, a, a tool, which is something, you know, which can just do the whole infrastructure management and automation comes at handy. So can you first explain what exactly is SUSO Manager and uh, does it fulfill these kind of needs? And then we can talk about what is new in the 4.1 release. A great question, Swapnil. So the SUSO Manager is an infrastructure management, configuration management tool, and uh, it's, it's actually enabling you to manage bare metal, virtual machines, containers, Linux, not only SUSE Linux, by the way. So in, in SUSE Manager 4.1, we have the new Linux distributions that we can manage uh, with the tool, like Oracle Linux or MicroFocus, um, Open Enterprise uh, Linux, uh, Ubuntu, and, and, and other ones. And uh, as you mentioned, it's very important for those edge use cases that you can do that without having physical access, right? Because, um, and not only during pandemic, where it's even more true today, but uh, there's no way that you go and fix and upgrade every time there's something to be updated. You're hundreds of thousands of, of, of devices and small data centers across the globe. There's another very important aspect is that sometimes connectivity is not guaranteed. So sometimes you're in very isolated locations, so SUSE Manager and SLES actually can be deployed and managed offline uh, or over Wi-Fi. Uh, so we have a lot of new air gap functionalities in, in this latest release of SUSE Manager and SLES as well for those use cases. Now let's talk about uh, some of the core components that you're talking about in context of release. Uh, let's talk about, uh, I'm talking SLE, not SUSE Manager. Uh, what what are the additions that you're making to hardware? What kind of new hardware supports you're adding there? Yeah, so we are adding uh, support for new ARM-based chipsets. So for, for instance, the new Fujitsu A64FX uh, chipset is now supported uh, on SLES. Intel CPUs, also the latest AMD EPIC chipsets are, are coming. Um, we had some already before, but we're constantly increasing the supported chipsets. And uh, not only to make sure that it works well together, but that we are optimizing uh, our, our Linux distribution for them as well. So, yeah, th th they are the main ones with less 15 service pack too. Uh, when we talk about SUSE, uh, I cannot stop thinking about talking about SAP. I just had a, a great discussion with Dan uh, last week. So, um, what are the what are the is there anything new for SAP HANA in this release? Less is a great. The best Linux for, for SAP workloads and, and uh, HANA and other SAP workloads in the cloud, not in the cloud. Uh, so we're not si just sitting on that. We keep on improving and optimizing. So with SLES 15 Service Pack 2, for instance, we are bringing new ways to monitor the high, high availability setup. Uh, so the, the monitoring of it, as well as uh, simplifying the, the deployment, the installation, the management of um, SAP workloads on top of, of uh, SLES, right? So, and that's true of public cloud or on-prem or in, in mixed setup as well. Um, so it's with, with less 15 service back to. Now, before we wrap this up, can you talk about what is the cadence, release cadence for uh, these service packs? Do you release it when they're ready or do you time it so that your users or customers are prepared for these updates? And uh, the last question, or uh, you can just supplement that one is that, how easy these updates are? Do you also help them as part of you know the subscription that you sell? Yeah, very good question. So we moved to a yearly cycle for service packs. So it's every year. 
and um, and the odd numbers are actually bringing new features and uh, the, the like service pack two is coming from with new features and consolidation so we have a clear cadence that our customers are familiar with and we also help them to do the migration uh, with SUSE manager or without SUSE manager and actually they can skip a service pack as well so they can go from um, SP1 to SP3 or 2 to 4 and uh, and other scenarios that we are we are making things easier for upgrades as well. Thomas, thank you so much for explaining not only this release, but also a little bit more about how the how, how SUSE and its ecosystem helps the customers. And as usual, I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Thank you, Swapnil.